We're driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search match with Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences, so the more you use Indeed, the better it gets. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Just go to Indeed.com slash BlueWire right now and support our show by saying that you heard about Indeed on this podcast. That's Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. In 2003, Nike signed 13-year-old Freddie Adu to a seven-figure contract. But Freddie didn't live up to the hype. He has turned down every single documentary project looking closely at the details of his career. Until now. People are going to look at everything you did because of the hype surrounding your arrival and what they think you can be. I'm Grant Wall, and this is American Prodigy, Freddie Adu, from Blue Wire Podcasts. This is the California Golden Bearcast, a part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network. This episode is brought to you by Indeed and Bet Online. Enjoy the episode. And hey, welcome back to another episode of the Golden Bearcast. Today, very kind of somber, weird day. We're recording on a Sunday. We had a game this morning. Um, and we're talking about the Cal UCLA game, which wasn't ever planned, but was planned 36 hours ago. <laughs> and now, and now we're here. Uh, I am one of your hosts, Rahwa. Alongside me, of course, is the best friend and co-host, Andy. Andy, how are you doing this evening? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very tough to say. I was just thinking about what you said. It's like 36, would I have preferred to go back 36 hours ago and been like, eh, just don't play the game. I think I'm actually happy the game got played. I think we learned things. So I'm feeling optimistic, but I don't know. Well, it's not just Andy's opinion that we have on the podcast today. We have, of course, one of our favorite uh, guests to have on the show. Taker Travion Beck has joined us again to talk about this UCLA game. Trey, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing great, man. Doing great. Kind of still sad about uh, this morning's game, but, you know, we'll bounce back next week. (laughs) Exactly. The optimism is there. I love it. I love it. The funny thing is, so the funny thing is, like, Trey has that optimism, not only as a player, but as a fan now. And I remember us, our first year graduating out of college, we had that same optimism, too. (laughs) And then, and then the the slowly the old blue like thing creeps into you, and it just happens. So I I I want to keep talking to Trey like every year and see like how his demeanor changes. <laughs> like as a Cal fan, does he become one of us, or will, will he eternally be an optimist? You know, as as a Cal fan, I, it's I, it's a curious social experiment. Yeah. <laughs> But we're going to talk about the UCLA Cal game uh, that happened 9 a.m. at the Rose Bowl. So I'm going to go over the box score, some simple stats. Then we're going to start talking about the game. So kickoff 9 a.m. in Pasadena. The Bears actually traveled on Saturday um, and they got ready to play this game bright and early. Uh, According to the graphic on the TV, it said they got ready at what? 5 a.m. I think is what the thing said uh, for warm ups and stuff. So, yeah, uh, the Bears actually dropped this game 34 to 10. The Bears actually started off pretty strong um, with a blocked punt that led to a Dario Longhetto field goal. Then um, it started to trickle down. Uh, or it's after Cam Bynum gets an interception off a of Daniel Scott tip, which was absolutely an awesome interception. Uh, Dorian Thompson Robinson on the other side, because we went three and out, takes it in for a two yard run. They go up seven, three, then it becomes 14, three. Then chase, runs it for uh, from eight yards out and gets us the touchdown. I think it was a 75 yard drive uh, to get us that. Yeah. 75 yards, 12 plays, four minutes, 35 uh, to get us within four. 
And then UCLA scores again, goes 20 to 10. Then they score again, it goes 27 10. And no points were scored in the third quarter. And then Britton Brown scores a 31 yard run to cap it all off for UCLA. And the Bears lose 34 to 10. Just going over some some simple stats for you UCLA 23 first downs, Cal only 11. UCLA 244 net rushing yards, Cal 54. Passing yards, UCLA 196 to 122 of the Bears. Um, And total yards of offense, 440 for UCLA, 176 for the Bears. Average gain per play, 2.8 for the Bears and 5.5 for UCLA. Um, Just other some rushing stats. Chris Brown Jr., 8 carries, 25 yards, a long of 9 yards. Uh, Chase Garbers actually led with... The most yards, 36, but he lost 30 on sacks. So um, he had a net gain of six. And then receiving-wise, Chris Brown Jr., four receptions. Led the team in uh, receptions, had 17 yards. Um, No Cal wide receiver broke 30 yards receiving this this morning. And then for UCLA, Demetric Felton, uh, I believe he was the one-time wide receiver who's now turned fully into a running back. 25 carries for 107 yards on the ground, 4.3 yards carry, only a long of 11. So defensively, the Bears led tackles by Daniel Scott, 11 total tackles. J.H. Tevis, uh, who played started at defensive end today, 10 tackles for him as well. Elijah Hicks um, had a great game with two uh, pass breakups along with seven tackles. And that was pretty much the highlights uh, for the Cal side, whereas the UCLA – They had five total sacks, nine total tackles for loss, one interception, five pass breakups. Um, Their defense definitely had wrecked some havoc on our offense this afternoon. But that is it of all the numbers. I'm going to hand it off to the two other gentlemen that are in this podcast for this evening. Uh, who, who, Who should go first? Does anyone have any thoughts, general thoughts about the game and would like to go first? Well, I kind of, I kind of want to ask Trey real, real fast, just like sure. Let's do it. You were in college much more recently than us, and also a collegiate athlete. How hard is it? Like, it put yourself in the situation that those players are in. You have a canceled game. There's like unknown. It's an unknown whether or not you're going to be able to play this week. Uh, second game gets postponed, and then you find out, you know, that you're going to be waking up maybe four or five a.m. How is that a challenge, or does that feel like not even? You're just sort of so excited for the game that doesn't matter what time you're just going to bring that energy who it's kind of it's kind of hard for me to say because i've i've never been in that situation just uh you know the things the cal football team went through this week is really unheard of i don't think i don't know i may be wrong i don't think it's ever been a game that's been rescheduled for the same <laughs> week versus another team and <laughs> an away game so i mean uh, just imagine like you're watching film all week like i was talking to my boys all week and they're they're watching film getting ready for uh for Arizona State, and then next thing you know, on a Thursday, they're like, "Okay, we we got to start watching film on UCLA." Like that's a, that's a, that's a lot that's a lot to handle. Mm-hmm. Really. So you know, it's like it's, and then you got to wake up at five a.m. And I know, I know what it feels like to wake up at five a.m. Because I think we played Ole Miss last year, if I'm not mistaken. I think we played them at nine a.m. If I'm, it was early, right? It was like eleven, yeah. but it was. Either Easter, yeah, wasn't that Rob? Wasn't that like really yeah, early? I think it, I think it was a nine a.m. like Pacific time. So you guys probably yeah. felt like you guys were waking up yeah. at like five or five or four a.m. Yeah, we had a. I can't remember which game. We had a game where we woke up very early. But yeah, I mean, it's just yeah. I I know it's probably a lot of wear and tear on their body, especially with the flight and things of that sort. So that probably had a lot to do with the outcome. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's still no excuse. I mean, you still got to go out and compete. So. Yeah, I think uh, I I guess I wanted just to follow up on that with Trey. Like I know I've learned a lot over like the last few years of being around the team and learning about the preparation that goes into week. And not only are you watching film, but like the walkthroughs and everything is like your your playbook menu for the game is dependent on who you're playing. Like it's not always a full playbook that you're playing. Correct. Right. Correct. So if you're doing that against ASU, like and th- like you're prepping for that offense. And then to pivot over a 36 hour period into a brand new like menu, playbook menu, like that must be insanely difficult because you're wiring your brain to play that, play those, you know, plays in your head 
or on the field on Saturday. And then you're being told like, yeah, scrap that. Like you have to learn a whole brand new like set of things in 48 hours. Yeah, that, that's probably what caused issues for the offense today. I know the defense it probably didn't uh, do too much because uh, I think DTR and uh, Jaden Daniels from Arizona State are kind of the same. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's how the defense kind of bases their playbook on is the quarterback we're going against that week. But I'm sure the offense, I mean, you, you're going from getting ready to play uh, ASU, who's a predominantly uh, cover, cover two, cover four defense, to having to go up against a cover three defense that uh, Coach Az got over there at uh, UCLA. So, mm-hmm. yeah, they probably have to change up the whole menu. Like Monday through uh, Wednesday, you probably have a whole set of plays that you're getting ready to run. Then, you know, you have to scrap that and learn a whole new set of plays. Uh, like sometimes we go into the week with specialty plays that we got that we have just for the opposing team. So, I mean, it probably it, it kind of sucks. And, you know, it, it's just a crappy week all along. It, it's just it's just an unfortunate set of events that happened this week. Andy. Yeah, well yeah. said. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I think like. I can kind of remember the same things when we were prepping like opponents. It's definitely on the week by week basis. And to have like all that kind of upended and, you know, what they were saying that like they haven't been running any 11 and 11s or like, you know, parts, parts of the team are just like unable to play or practice. Um, You know, it's just one of those things that maybe would have been better off to like brand it as an exhibition game. (laughs) It's sort of (laughs) called that way, you know, like it was like a, spring game like an old spring ball like when you would actually play another team something like that so i mean no matter what i think it's good to have played the game i think we saw that ucla you know just the difference between them having played one game prior to cal not you know looked like they were just like faster in in some areas and um you know just a little bit more ready and i think that all that matters and yeah i mean there's a it's an, it was an interesting, very interesting game because I think like some people went really negative on it. And I'm like, dude, like how can you really – can you draw a single conclusion from this game? Like people are make, out there making judgments on Bill Musgrave. I was like, dude, like you can't. <laughs> you just <laughs> can't. Like it's just – there's just no way. So, uh, you know, I understand like where those people are like why they're frustrated. But I think like once the first game got canceled, I kind of got rid of this idea that – like this was Cal's year to go to the Rose Bowl and like win the Pac-12 North. I was just kind of like, this year is going to be crazy. Like, I don't even know if it's going to happen. Like Utah still hasn't played anybody. So I think we just kind of need to reset maybe some expectations on it. I'm sure, Trey, you can provide the perspective that the players are going to give it their all, no doubt about that. But for us as fans, like maybe not necessarily like looking at this as like the year to go to the Rose Bowl. Dude, like is there's nothing been there's nothing normal about this entire year i think like you know us dreaming of the rose bowl even though it doesn't feel normal it feels normal to me because i do it every year does that make any sense <laughs> <laughs> makes sense i you know after the game and i was like rolling through twitter like i you know i saw like darius allensworth was talking about putting he i just he said i think he tweeted something along the lines of like put chase in the shotgun and let him deal um, and it's just, it's, it's cool. And Trey was on Twitter as well, you know, um, talking about the game as he was watching. Like, I think it's, it's just so cool watching now a lot of these former guys that have come through the program are watching the game and tweeting about it and talking about the football last, like the actual into the weeds of the football stuff about it. That is like us fans talking about it, but we get that perspective of what it was like as a player. Um, and so with that, I'm going to pivot and we're going to talk about, let's talk about the offense for a little bit. And then we'll, we'll talk about the defense. Um, Trey, I know you were, you were tweeting about, you know, making some shots going deep um, just to keep the defense honest. Um, like as a defender, like what, what was UCLA doing that you just thought like we just couldn't get over um, from an offensive perspective? Uh, you know, they just weren't afraid of our, uh, our receivers. I mean, I, we showed a lot on tape last year that we're we're not a team that takes a lot of deep shots, and we have guys on offense who are pretty electric who we should take more deep shots with. I mean, we have Nico, we have Makai, Trayvon. I think all our receivers can go deep. Kakoa, all our receivers can go deep, but I think 
until we start taking deep shots, teams are going to just continue to sit on our receivers' routes. I mean, that's how that's how UCLA has so many pra- uh, pass breakups today. I mean, you're just when, when you get when you start to get comfortable and get in the groove as a DB. I mean, you 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 feel unstoppable. So it's like you you get to a point where you're sitting there like, okay, like they're not going to attack me deep, then I'm just going to sit here and make plays on the ball all day. So uh, and then like just going back to what you said, what Da said, um, it's it's hard. It's hard nowadays to teach a college quarterback to, from going uh, from shotgun to back under center. So I, I've seen Chase uh, sort of uh, struggle with that a little bit today because it's like as you're dropping back, you have to make the reads. And rather when you're in shotgun, like you can already see what's happening. So it's like Chase is dropping back and he's trying to make the reads. And by the time he gets to the read he wants to have, it's somebody in his face. Where, whether, uh, where, as if you're in shotgun, you can just see everything. Then you can just dump it down to Chris Brown or Marcel Dancy and let them work. So it, it was a lot going on with the offense today. Um, took like a little conservative approach, probably because they had a short week. So I'm sure that they'll get back on track. I mean, it, it's probably not going to bother Chase that much. Yeah, if there's anything we've learned with Chase over the last two years, he's absolutely a, a gamer. Like yeah. the dude, like always wants to play, right? So yeah, he's a pretty resilient dude. Mm-hmm. That under that under center piece was something that I texted you, Rob, and I mm-hmm. because I saw it on Trey's Twitter. I was like, <laughs> but it was just that they had moved under center, and I remembered that I feel like Bo had initially had tried Garber's under center, but then moved him to taking more shotgun snaps and then rolling him out of the pocket, and so that was something that I, I also thought was really interesting. And then you saw. Like Brady Quinn, who isn't really great on the call, but he was talking about how like Chase just seemed like indecisive. I think the big thing that I saw was like if UCLA is crashing down, the way that I think you can get around that, one of them is you can throw deep. The other thing you can do is you can get the ball out fast. So because you know you're gonna have the advantage if you get the ball to receiver out in space. So like I just felt like everything was late, just slightly late. I, I don't know if you guys saw that as well. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, that could be one of those things uh, that was just slowing Chase's ability to get the ball out because maybe he's like just concerned with, you know, is it a three, five, seven step drop or whatever? Like, who knows? But um, yeah, that was just a, you know, I think it was once just a highlight. I think it was a really good point, Trey. And then two was something that I'd be curious to see what they do with that going forward. The wait is finally over football is back you might not be at a game this year but you can still be in on the action at bet online bet online is going the extra mile to make sure you can get in on every possible chance to win this season from game spreads and totals to team player and coaching props bet online gives you more options to wager than anywhere else you can get in on their season opening bonuses today and start off wagering on wins divisions and championship futures all day every day Head to Bet Online today and take advantage of all the great sign up bonuses. Don't forget to use the promo code BLUEWIRE at betonline.ag. That's BLUEWIRE, all one word. Bet Online, your online sportsbook experts. Twenty twenty has already reshaped how we work, and it's almost over. Businesses across the globe are challenged to be their most efficient, which means every hire is critical. Indeed is here to help. Indeed is the number one job site in the world with more total visits than any other job site, according to Comscore. Indeed helps you find quality candidates quickly so you can focus on hiring the person you need to keep your business going. Unlike other sites, Indeed gives you full control and payment flexibility over your hiring. You only pay for what you need, you can pause your account at any time, and there are no long-term contracts. And now, Indeed's new way of matching you with candidates instantly delivers a short list of quality candidates whose resume on Indeed match your job criteria that you can contact the moment you sponsor a job, making Indeed the only job site that can move as fast as you do. 73% of online job seekers in the U.S. visit Indeed each month, according to Comscore. That's total visits. So it's clear Indeed can get you the help you need and the quality hire you need as well. That's why more than 3 million businesses worldwide use Indeed for hiring. Right now, Indeed is offering our listeners a free $75 credit to boost your job post, which means more quality candidates will see it fast. Try Indeed out with a free $75 credit at Indeed.com slash 
blue wire this is their best offer available anywhere go right now to indeed.com slash blue wire that's b-l-u-e-w-i-r-e offer valid through december 31st terms and conditions apply yeah i think i you guys both make absolutely solid points i think uh it's, you saw a lot of the balls that chase through, like either behind the receiver. There was a, a few checkdowns to even Chris Brown that was behind him, even though Chris was just standing on the sidelines, like in the flat. Like he was just, he's just, he, there's just so many things going through his head. It looked like that he was like just throwing it and it would just be a little bit behind him. There was receivers like hitting, you know, basically in the numbers, but still like wasn't anticipating the ball. Like there were a lot of like first game little jitters that you saw, particularly in like the first quarter. And then it seemed like the guy settled down a little bit, but then the play calling also, as Trace Trey said, like it felt very conservative. Um, but I I want Trace or Trey's take um, on this, like from seeing Musgraves' offense, even though it was just a single game, like do you, are you seeing any like nuances outside of you know Chase being under center uh, from a schematic standpoint, like what? Bo Baldwin's offense was and what Musgrave is looking to try and do. Like, do you, do you notice any of that at all? I didn't. I didn't see any of that at all. I didn't see many RPOs. Um, I didn't. I didn't see uh, a lot of getting receivers in space. Uh, that's kind of what uh, Coach Bo wanted to do a lot was a uh, RPO and get his uh, playmakers into space. Yeah. Uh, what I seen. What, what I seen. What Cal wanted to come out and do was try to pound the rock. But um, once you start getting into a deficit, it's kind of hard to keep doing. So yeah, dude, that was just that was a whole new style of offense, which is I mean. It's like, it's the first game, so it's like you're gonna struggle. Mm-hmm. You have a yep. whole new offense, so it's like it's no need to panic. I've seen a lot of people panic game. Like it's, it's just a new offense. Like you you'll get it together. I mean they they still played well as a team. They played hard. Uh, defense just can't miss tackles, and that's really it. I mean it's simple things to fix. Yeah. There's a couple questions here that people sent to us on Twitter that I, I think we kind of answered, but I just want to acknowledge the questions. Like, Vlad asked us, why did it seem like no one was ever open? Um, and I think Trey kind of talked about that with, you know, the DBs sitting back on the routes and, and such. Jacob also asked us, should I be worried that in Musgrave's first game, we showed absolutely zero creativity? Once again, Trey's point, it's week one of a new offense. They don't want to show everything that they have, like, there. And plus... As we talked about with the whole menu stuff and everything, I'm sure they they dialed it back in terms of what they were going to call um, this week. And, you know, you saw UCLA's taping as Colorado last week, and I think Trey's absolutely right. They came out and tried to r- run the ball because that's exactly what Broussard did for Colorado, their running back. And he, he had, what, like two touchdowns and like over 120 yards rushing like or 200 yards rushing. Like <laughs> it, it, it was a recipe that you saw worked, like just from a single game of last week, and they tried to replicate it. But – you know, just did it come to fruition? I think the other thing here too is like, I I do think that this game looks worse than it really was. The Garber's pick that, you know, it looks like Makai s- slipped on. I didn't initially see that, but it looked like he kind of tripped. And the ball it looked, they were saying the ball was high, but actually it just looked like Polk tripped as it was in, like, and so that made it look like it was high, but actually wasn't too high. Then it got popped up, picked, and then they score, get the touchdown 27 10. Like, if that doesn't happen, and even if Cal just goes three and out and scores 20 to 30, like 20 to 10, and then we get, uh, we would then kick the field goal, I'm assuming, to bring it to 20 to 13 instead of going for it where we did. And all of a sudden you're talking about like a one score game. Like I realize this is the optimist in me. Like I can do this calculus in my head to be like, Hey, we were still in it if this didn't happen. But you know, it wasn't one of these, there was a lot of negativity out there. I think it's more reflective of just like the world we're living in right now. It's like, like it's hard. Like we want good things. And when we don't get good things this year, it's just like, ah, damn it. And just like pile on. But I think that, you know, some of those things that happen, like that's a devastating interception it takes place in our territory. And then I think that's the first time I've ever seen a legal block, illegal blocking called on a defender. Like I can't think of a time in my life I've ever heard that call. So where they're like about to get out of it and get a, get them to a field goal. It's now first and goal, like halfway to the goal. Like, I mean, at that point it was just like, ah, well, you know, maybe it's not our day. <laughs> 
yeah, that illegal block call too was like everyone. I remember I was watching that happen, and I was like, oh wow, that offensive lineman literally like landed on his head. Like Cam took him out, um, and then they're like through the flag, and they're like con- the refs are converging. Like what? What is there to talk about? <laughs> I'm so confused. I was so confused at that call. Um, But yeah, it it was weird. It was absolutely weird. Trey, is that, (laughs) are you aware of the illegal block? Like, is that a thing or is it new? uh, It's, it's a, it's a very rare call that almost zero refs call. I was, I was confused on it as well. It is by the rule book. It, it was an illegal block on the defense. Technically. By the rule book, but it's it's never ever called ever. So I was very I was very confused. Like, I just didn't know what was going on. The, I mean, basically the rule is you can chop the offensive lineman coming towards you as long as you're inside the uh, tackle box. And I guess once the lineman gets downfield, it is then deemed dangerous. Uh, so hitting him below the knee, I think, is a legal block. Uh, I am. I don't know why they called it, but yeah. Yes, because his his six seven two hundred eighty pound frame shrinks as he runs downfield. Correct. Right. Correct. <laughs> correct. Well, I'm, just, I'm just supposed to let him kill me. <laughs> yeah, he's running at full speed. I have to just stand my ground and take the hit. Oh, okay, man. let me ask one other question with that too, because it just popped up in my head. So as you look at uh, on the fourth down play where we took the shot at the end zone. Tell me, as a DB, is that PI? Uh, I'm trying to remember. Oh, uh, to Makai, right? To Makai, yeah, yeah, in the end zone. Um, uh, it's it's tricky. I, I seen the play, and I was looking for a flag as well. It's tricky because it looks like he's trying to turn his head back, and as long as you're attempting to turn your head, it's not a it's not a penalty. So if he didn't touch him which i think he did but as long as you're attempting to get your head back around it's not a flag but i think it was just so close to call they didn't want to you know change the game but you know it, it, it looked like a pass interference from me yeah Makai was looking for it too he was like he, yeah he, he was very yeah but i there. never know because i feel like it's so damn hard to play defense yeah. <laughs> there's, there's so many rules so it's like I was wondering if from the def- like from the DB perspective, it was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, it was it was definitely close, definitely close. Um, we do have a question here. Let I guess we can pivot a bit to the to defensive side. We have a question here from aspiring CPA. He asks about: Is there any reasonable explanation to the atrocious tackling that seems the exact opposite of what a Justin Wilcox coach football team has done? The last few years, but and I think I think it's a I think that's an actual viable question because there were a lot of tackles that the Bears missed. Um, that in any other year, I think it would have been any other game, it would have been surefire tackles. Um, but I'm gonna blame it up to 2020 and the like 9 a.m. game on a Sunday, like just the, your sleep schedules being all out of whack at your first game and. I think the if I'm remembering the game correctly, the majority of those misses too came somewhere in the first like three or four drives. Um, I like the, the there was a couple like on DTR that they could have had him in the backfield and he just was a magician with his feet and somehow threw the ball out of bounds. There were some on the sidelines that they missed to Felton and some of their wide receivers. Um, but yeah, uh, either of you guys, if you want to talk about or answer that question. Um, I kind of took it upon myself, but <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, it's game is game one. That, that's all I have to say It's game mm-hmm. one. Uh, it, you know, short and fall camp, you know, not really much time. I think they were without a defensive line for two weeks. So you can't really practice full 11 on 11. So, I mean, it's, I mean, it's game one. <laughs> I mean, it's just a lot. <laughs> going on. I mean, that's just, that's really just how 2020 is going for everyone. It's just a lot. So it's like, you know, uh, as a football player, people tend to forget that the other team is full of athletes as well. So it's like their job is to make you miss. And UCLA has some really good athletes like Kyle Phillips, Felton, uh, Coda, DTR, the quarterback. I mean, they have great athletes on their team. So, you know, it's just just first game vibes. I mean, you'll fix it. I was, I was talking to someone today and uh, we were talking about just all the things that went wrong 
And basically, we made, the, we made the metaphor of this is like studying for an English exam and your teacher tells you it's on Shakespeare. And then 36 hours before your test, she says, no, it's actually going to be on Ernest Hemingway. <laughs> like, yes, it's English, <laughs> but two totally different things <laughs> that you have to prep for. Uh, and I kind of feel like that's how we have to look at this game. Right. How I don't know how other what other lens you can like. Or as Andy, you were saying when we first started talking was how can you like definitively say, nope, yeah, Musgrave, not, no, not happening here. Like he's got to go. Like it's, you know, the the defense, their tackling and fundamentals are terrible. Like, oh my goodness, like we're going to have to make coaching changes. Like it, it's game one with, you know, a lot of brand new guys on the defense. Like I was talking to Trey before Andy, you got on and I was looking through this box and I was like, it's weird, like not seeing you guys on that box score. No Jalen Hawkins, no Ashton Davis, no Evan Weaver, no Travion Beck. Like, just even those names. Like, they're yeah, all they're, gone. Dude, the text I got, like, what happened to the defense? I mean, what do you mean what happened to the defense? <laughs> That's – we lost so much talent there. Like, did you expect that we could just plug in and just be just as good? Like, and then also, like, to the tackle saying, I don't mean to, like, call anybody out here, but, like, Look, I'm just going to give you the long-term Cal Bear lens here, and we played better defensively today than we did in the entire Sonny Dykes era. So if you want to talk about dad, bad tackling, go rewatch those games, and then we can talk about some missed tackles. But otherwise, like, yeah, it's the first game. Like, what did you <laughs> – exactly. There's no fall camp. There's no – there was no prep. There's no – like, it, there's just nothing. Like, spring ball was shortened. Like, I just don't – no. And like, that's what we were talking about yesterday, Rob. It's like the Vegas odds were basically like the person in Vegas was like, I don't know. <laughs> like, anything can happen. So I think uh, like, let's just not draw too many conclusions about a Wilcox defense in those terms. I just think extrapolate out the point to where it just doesn't really make too much sense to me because with anything in life, if you look at one small thing and just that's it, I mean, I don't, I don't know if that necessarily bodes super well. Uh, yeah, I guess, uh, I guess we can transition that into maybe giving out some awards for this game and talking about who we, you know, let's talk about some positive stuff. We've talked about yeah. negative stuff. Um, let's talk about the offense first. Um, uh, this, do you guys have like a uh, an award you want to give for you know offensive player for this game? Uh, I guess Andy, we can start with you. We'll go. To Tra- we'll go to Trey. Ooh. <laughs> 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 offense. <laughs> offense. <laughs> I don't know. Can I pass? Is passing an option? <laughs> I can't think. All I can think of is the one. I thought Moore had a pretty nice catch. <laughs> that was it. I thought that was nice. That was exciting. I mean, Chase's run, if I could just highlight one play, like uh, him beating those defenders to the sideline to get to the end zone um, was pretty impressive. I thought that, you know, just to see his – dude, he's quick. Like, he's way faster than, I think, the eye test. And it's, you know, a huge asset to, to our offense. So, I guess I will take – you know, my, I just like, even though he had a tough game, I'll still be pretty positive on Garbers and his ability to kind of make things happen um, when the entire offense was forced to be pretty one dimensional. I'm sure Trey will have a better. <laughs> 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 yeah. Trey, I, you got one? I, I, I don't. I was, I would say Garbers because a lot of, a lot of quarterbacks, when they get frustrated, they would they would try to force a lot of things, and Garbers didn't take that route. Like he just he just remained calm and tried to remain the leader. So I, I would say Garbers. Uh, somebody I don't know who it was. I don't know who it was. Some I guess he was a freshman. He came in, and when I tell you that boy could run, I don't know who it was. He was that running back though. Oh, and that it, was uh, Damian Moore, number twenty six. Oh, that thing? Yeah. I, ho- yeah. I hosted him. I hosted him. Okay, I like him. He's, he's fast. <laughs> he's fast. He's definitely – I was like, whoa. They gave him the ball. I said, whoa. He was moving. Yeah, yeah I like him. I, I think he's going to be a good player. Yeah, Damian Moore in the second quarter got his first two 
two plays. His first was a rush of loss of three, and then the second was a rush of 11. So, yeah, it was 11. There was 11. It was right before half, right? Yeah, right before the half. Yeah. 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 yeah he, was, he was running pretty fast. I like that. Yeah, that was a surprise, too. I think a lot of people had Chris Street probably pegged as the guy that was higher out of that running back class. But then to see Damian Moore as the number three back out of the onto the field was very surprising, to say the least. But, well, yeah, Trey hosted him, so you know he's going to be good. Yeah. <laughs> Trey the ultimate closer. <laughs> Every Cal well, what team- about Every th- every Cal team every four years needs a closer in on the recruiting show when they host. Need we got we just got to figure out who that who that next guy is. Yeah. Uh, Rob, uh, what about? Oh, sorry. Oh no, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, Rob, I was just gonna say, what about you? Like, you don't get to ask the oh. tough question to both of us, and not. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot. Uh, yeah, I mean, my pick was actually gonna be Damian Moore. Like, just from a like a rising star perspective, I thought he he flashed some some pretty cool stuff, but. I think I, I, I the easiest pick here is uh, Chase Garbers, but I'll I'll go with Makai. I think uh, Makai sneakily was was pretty active um, out of the receiver role. He was targeted quite a few times by Chase too, um, but just couldn't come up with a couple of those catches. They're clearly using his physical advantage um, over some of the smaller DBs, whether it's outside, like even that touchdown um, attempt. Was that double move with the Sutter step to get to get out, and he definitely was taller and, and bigger than the the defensive back. So I think he had a I think he had a good game. It just he couldn't come up with the the actual passes, but his route running was solid. He got some separation, and that's that's to that's a that's to say a lot because I think a lot of the receivers didn't get much separation all afternoon, and that's you know, attributing to what Trey was talking about, about not taking those deep shots and they were sitting down on those routes. But I think Makai did the best with what he was given. So I'm going to give it to Makai. Yeah. All right. Let's move to the defense. Anyone got any uh, defensive player picks? Trey's, Trey's probably got a pick right here because uh, he's probably still friends with a lot of these guys. And if he pulls <laughs> the wrong name here, he's going to he's gonna get it. I think I think the defense as a whole played well. I think they were just put in a few bad situations. But I mean, I, I the secondary played well to me. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, I think all three of DTR's uh, touchdown passes were like less than five yards. I remember two of them were on the goal line play action passes. And other than that, I mean, Cam had a pick. G Scott had eleven tackles. Uh, Craig Craig played well. Uh, love Craig. He's gonna be great. Uh, Chiggy, I don't think he had a target his way, and Josh dropped the interception. And I think as a whole, I think, yeah, I mean, as for my answer, I would say the whole defensive secondary. I think they played really well, <laughs> but you know, that, that's that's <laughs> yeah, I have to go all of them. I think they all played well. I mean, they made some good playing plays, it, playing it very safe. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. What, what was the name of the guy who was playing D-line? Tevis is his last name? Yeah, Jay Tevis. Jay Tevis. I had, like, candidly, Rob, and you know, like, I've been off Twitter, so my knowledge is gone. But I had never heard of Tevis. And I was like, oh, this dude is big, and this dude is good. And I was like, oh, this is, that was really great to see. So, I I mean, I thought he showed out pretty well. Um, I thought Brett Johnson also had a – like I started to get into a really good rhythm where he was disrupting and being, you know, you started hearing that announcer say Brett Johnson, the way that Nam says Brett Johnson. (laughs) And I think that was uh, really exciting too. So I, I mean, like shout out to the D line who went through, you know, a a lot. I think that the big plays that I saw that really disrupted us are the ones that remind me of the, like the chip Kelly, you know, back in Oregon days when they would like really set up the screen and just, and super, it set it up super well, and I was like, ah, I, I've seen that work. I remember that from Oregon. I just remember it. Like, it just looks hard to defend for me, so I can't imagine, like, the challenges with that. Because I know, like, back in the day, well, under Tedford, it would drive us crazy. Like, defending the screen was just a huge issue for us. And um, and so I think, like, you know, the missed tackles and stuff will all get better. And I think, like, for me, for sure, a highlight was, like, Brett Johnson and, and Tevis from that sort of D-line unit. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, 
Yeah, you, there were moments where you saw Brett Johnson just like take because he's playing nose guard, right? He just takes the center and off the snap is just pushing the center back like a good three, four yards just into the pocket. And I, I was watching that. I was like, please get our nose guards healthy. I want to see him at the defensive end, like taking on with space, like a left tackle or a right tackle, like just just bull rushing him um, and just having those quarterbacks nowhere to go, right? Just flushing him. So, oh, please, 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 this week, please. Bring our <laughs> nose guards back, please. Um, I My pick... Um, I'm going to pick Tattersall. I Tattersall, I think, had a very quietly good game. People, I think he had a few issues when he was sitting in coverage. But when you put him in open space and when you saw him like get into the backfield and when you saw him get on the edge to make tackles, he was athletic and he was making those plays. And, man, after seeing – Andy, you and I were at that game when he went down. And we were like, oh, my goodness. Like, I pray to God he's okay. Um, but then for him to like make that full recovery and the, and to play today and play like that, I was like, yeah, um, I think he's going to be, I think he's going to be an absolutely great player. The, the other surprise with that was just seeing more than two inside linebackers playing. <laughs> what? Like we're allowed to have, we're allowed to rotate our inside linebackers. I didn't know that was allowed. I didn't, I thought it was just Jordan Kanasich and uh, Evan Weaver playing every single snap of every game. <laughs> like I thought that that was like the standard, right? We're not allowed to switch, but we saw ISFA um, get a tackle, and we saw a bunch of guys rotate in. So, got some got some young blood on the front seven that I'm stoked to see. Uh, all right, well, I think uh, I think that's most of what we had to go over for UCLA. I think uh, the last question I got here on Twitter, I think we can use to kind of end. Is uh, Katie sends us this question. She says, "How sad do I need to prepare myself to be over this season of Cal football?" <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you need to be really sad because, as all three of us have been saying, it's only game one. But let's flip that question. What what is there to look forward to? Like what? How how excited or like what things should we be like keeping our head held high for going into the next? four games um you got anything uh, trey yeah i say probably the youth man uh, like y'all said y'all, it's a lot of young guys playing and like you have a, i know especially a lot of young guys in the secondary who are going to be back next year and just to see them develop it, it looks really good i mean you got chiggy craig d scott that's for sure coming back next year uh maybe elijah so it's like Man, then you got Tattersall and dudes on the D line that's coming back. I mean, I mean, it's Cal is going to be awesome for years to come. And you know, this is definitely a tricky season. And you know, people are probably going to be upset if you lose more games. But I mean, you just got to look forward to the future. I mean, you lost what? You lost three dudes to the draft, and then more playmakers left as well. So you know, it's a lot of it's going to be a lot of ups and downs. And then Garbers has another. Wait, does Garbers Garbers have another season? Right. I think so, yeah. 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 Well, this year's yeah. a mulligan for everyone, so he could I think he could come back and play two more years if he wanted. Yeah. So yeah, so Garbers has another season as well. And I think all the receivers have another season except Kakoa. So I mean, you, you only have to look forward to the future at this point. And you know, they're gonna battle hard this year as moats as we're taught to do under Coach Wilcox. So yeah, I'm just optimistic. So well said. I'm scared to put anything on top of that. I just want to throw a nice little pitch in for gratitude. Just be grateful that we have football. We have Pac-12 football. They were able to see a game. I think that's the healthiest mindset. And it took me two quarters to, to get there. It's just sort of being like, yeah, this isn't the year for expectations. Like, I just don't think it is. It's just, let's see what we got. We know we're recruiting well. We we know we have the right, you know, some excellent coaches like we're in a good we're in a good position of golf football. This isn't the year to like throw the chair out the window and just be you know super upset. Not that there's ever a year for that, but this is definitely not that one. So just, just go into each game, like look for the positives. I don't think Oregon State is going to be the easiest matchup. Uh, to be totally honest, that offense is is you know going to cause problems. So like. It will be a unique journey as every season is, but this one we can kind of just be a little bit more grateful that we just, 
you know, we get to see some football and uh, ex- exactly what Trey said, like look for the, the youth, look for your next favorite player because a lot of our favorite players just left the program last season to go on to new and different and better things. And so uh, this now is the time for discovery. Well said to the both of you. I think, uh, I think that's a good way to wrap it. Um, and of course, this is the Golden Bear Cast, a part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network. And as always, go Bears. Go Bears. Thank you, Trey. Go Bears. Go Bears. We're driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search match with Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences. So the more you use Indeed, the better it gets. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Just go to Indeed.com slash Blue Wire right now and support our show by saying that you heard about Indeed on this podcast. That's Indeed.com slash Blue Wire. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. <laughs>